Yo, we live. Hey, man, welcome, welcome back to the Golden Goose DFS show. I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose, here today bringing you another edition of the starting five for DraftKings and Fan Duel. All right, but before we get into it, you already know what we gotta do the lineup review with the updated starting five that I posted yesterday on Twitter, okay. And while we get into this breakdown, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn your notification bell on so you can be here, so you can know when the video drops and you can be here rocking with us, alright? Tonight, man, the scoring was utterly insane. This was probably one of the most ridiculous fantasy scoring nights I can remember in DFS, man. It was a wild night. And my single entry, I think the cash line was 340. That is just ridiculous. You, If you had a player get you 5X tonight, just throw him away. It didn't help you. Like, it was... And, I thought coming into the slate, you would, I knew well, I knew coming into the slate was going to be stars and screw up because it was so much value. But you had so many guys outperformed their salaries, you didn't even really need to pay up for the 10K guys. You probably could have took it down without paying all the way up for these 10K guys. But let's get into the breakdown on this wild scoring night. My best lineup put up 336. This was in the $1.20 max. Um, yeah, came in, what, 5,000 plays. Got a little money back. We ended up losing like half our buy-in. So, not a too bad of a night, but definitely not a winning night. So, if you caught the updated starting five, man, you seen I went with uh, Russell Westbrook, Edmund Sumner, Luke Kennard, O'Shea Brissett, and Nikolai Jokic. All right, starting at the top, Russell Westbrook. Came in at 35% on in this contest right here. We knew it would be high on. We knew a lot of people were going to that Golden State uh, Washington Wizards game. I tried to get away from the Westbrook and Jokic chalk that I felt like it was going to be, but it was just, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I just, it was so much value. I didn't want to risk it with other guys. I like Brogdon and things of that nature, but that game could have got out of hand. So I didn't want to risk it, especially with me already throwing in the value is risky anyway. So you, de- I wanted some security with the studs and I wanted to go what's the rest book right here. It's the highest total on the slate, best game environment. We knew it come in kind of high on, but I didn't care because of the value plays. Like I said, I want that security to go with my my cheap value guys. So we got the Russell Westbrook here, gave us 60 DK points, an okay night, but that did that didn't move the needle for you tonight, especially if you paid all the way up. Like I said, it was a couple other guys you could have paid down to and got this same production. Mm-hmm. Coming in as shooting guard, we went Edmund Sumner, right at 23% ownership. In the start lineup, we expected him to see solid minutes. He saw 25, which was okay, but we would have loved him to get to 30 plus. He gave us 16 DK points, just nah. And and being meh, wasn't gonna get it done tonight, man. It was very rough out there. All right, my small four play Luke Kennard. I think that was self-explanatory. All those Clipper guys out, they was going to need scoring. And he's one of their better scorers off the bench. So, I wanted to get to him. He came in at 40% ownership. Gave us a big performance, man. 44 DK points. Very solid at this price tag, 3700 Luke Kennard was got it done for us, all right? Coming in at power forward. I told if you saw the video yesterday, you know that was my favorite play on the slate across both sides. O'Shea Brissett. Can't say I saw this coming, though. He laid a monster performance for us, man. 51 DK points. Got him at 52% ownership right here. Just a great performance from O'Shea Brousset. You definitely need him to the, needed him tonight. He was the slate breaker, whatever you want to call it. You definitely need O'Shea Brousset. O'Shea Brissett tonight as the, the winning liner, I think, put up 422. So you really had to have it together tonight. Which is why we didn't cash that high because of Nikolai Jokic, who I went with at center. 26% on, only 44 DK points. Nowhere near what we needed, especially at this 11K price tag. Like I said at the beginning, man, it was so many ceiling performances from lower salary guys than the pay-up options that you could have got it done without even paying up for these guys, right? Then rounding out my lineup, 
went Luca here as I went with the the three superstar approach. Just wanted to lock in. I knew Luca would come in low on. I got him at eleven percent ownership. This was beautiful. I I, I like Luca. He was gonna be in my starting five, but I was just worried about this game being a blowout. Got too cautious and playing it too safe today. Didn't take enough chances as tonight was definitely the night to do it as they would have paid off, but. Just playing it too safe. Went Luka, though. Got him at 11% ownership. He gave us 62 DK points. Very solid. But you could have saved salary and got that same production on the night like tonight. All right? Then filling out my uh, rest of the lineup. Went Raul Neto. Since I was chalky with my pay-up options and some of my uh, value plays, I wanted to go to a different value play. A guy that I that I could take a chance on once I saw him get, getting the start. Raul Neto. Got him at 3% ownership. He 10x for us. Gave us 34 DK points. Very solid. Very solid for us. But... Like I said, it was just so many outlier performances that it, it didn't move the needle much, all right? And then finishing out with Justin Holiday, Thought he would come in a little higher on. Got him at 10% at 3,900. He gave us right at 23 DK points, just okay. Not, nothing to shoot us up the leaderboard, all right? So there you have it, man. It was my best lineup from tonight. Let's get into tomorrow's six game months. The six game of tomorrow might be just as crazy, man. We have... Tons of pending injury news. Tons of news, man. It could be another stars and scrubs tomorrow, but there's not meant that many stars to pay up for. It's a good amount, but not as many as you know as a twelve gamer. But at the top, I want to look at Kimball Walker. You see the Q next to his name. They have him as probable, so I'm expecting him to be in. Now, the reason why I want to look at Kimball Walker here is because Jalen Brown is doubtful tomorrow, so we're anticipating him being out. Jason Tatum is questionable. If he misses, this is going to be the Kimball Walker show, man. He should get all the usage and all the shots he wants. So even though it's a tough matchup going against Phoenix, if those two are out, I like taking my chance in this matchup with the increased usage and shot volume from Kimball Walker, all right? I like getting to him at a point guard at 7,400 price tag if those guys are out tomorrow coming in as shooting guard i want to look at josh jackson going to san antonio spurs this is another play that's going to be pending on injury news the pistons have been sitting the, the starters like joseph grant Plumley on the second night of back-to-back so i'm anticipating that trend continuing and if that is the case you know josh and ja- josh jackson going to see increased run increased usage things of that nature i definitely want to get to him but keep your eyes and ears open for that news tomorrow because if the starters are in it's definitely going to change Coming in at small four, I want to look at Najee Marshall for the Pelicans. James Johnson is doubtful tomorrow, so anticipating him being out. So that should be me, Najee Marshall, in line for 25. Uh, at least 25 minutes, I believe. If if the game gets out of hand and they um walk away with, it, he could see a little more. He saw 35 minutes last time out. I'm not going to anticipate him getting that many minutes again. But like I said, if the game blows out, he could reach the 30 minute uh level once again here. But at 5400, he's a solid producer. I like this kid's game. I told you on the last lady play, I like Najee Marshall right here. This price tag. Coming in at power forward, a guy I want to take a look at, Christos Porzingis. Power forward is rough tomorrow on DraftKings. There are only two pay-up options right now, Christos Porzingis and Zion Williams. That could change if the other guys like Greek Tatum and that things and, and those guys play, but if they do not, power forward is going to be looking very, very slim. And if... And if I if that's the case, I want to go to this pay up option and Mr. Porzingis here going against the Lakers. And he's been very solid for the Mavericks the last uh this season in general. He's looking to shoot more, looking to score more. Nice stretch for going here against the Lakers. I like it. And if Drummond misses and he starts at the center, he should have a few more rebound opportunities. I like going to Porzingis in this matchup right here against the Lakers. And coming in at center. I want to look at Isaiah Stewart. Just, just another play, like I said, Josh Jackson. Anticipating the starters resting again since it is the second night of a back-to-back. And if Plumlee is out, Isaiah Stewart is is the guy. He's going to be chalky if Plumlee is out, but I'm okay with it. As 
he should be more one more of the safer uh, value plays tomorrow. This fifty eight hundred if Plumlee is out. All right, I like getting Isaiah Stewart. All right, there you have it. My starting five right now for DraftKings: Kimber Walker, Josh Jackson, Najee Marshall, Kristaps Porzingis, and Isaiah Stewart. Let's go take a look at FanDuel and see what I'm liking over there. Mm -hmm. At the top, the guy I want to look at, Mr. Terry Rozier, in a nice matchup going against the lackluster defense in the Chicago Bulls right here. Terry Rozier has just been solid as of late. We saw Devontae Graham come back last game, but that didn't stop anything as Terry Rozier put up a solid performance last time out. And in this matchup at this price tag, 7800 a lot cheaper than uh, Draft. Ain't a lot cheaper, but cheaper than DraftKings. I definitely want to take a look at him in this matchup right here going against the Chicago Bulls, all right? Coming in at shooting guard, same play, same game, same thing. Josh Jackson, anticipating those starters being out. Big improvement for him in his fantasy um, projections, all right? Small Ford, you know I'm going to get to my boy Najee Marshall over here. Cheaper on fan duel, 4,800, anticipating 25 Plus minutes from them. I'm going to say plus because they should be able to handle the magic easily right here. Mm -hmm. Like getting the Najee Marshall this 4800 price tag. Coming in at power forward. Right back to the Pistons. Staying with Isaiah Stewart. 5500 power forward eligible over here on FanDuel. We'll take it. Just keep your eyes and ears open for that news, man. And that's going to... Make or break the, this whole uh, starting five right now. But for the moment, I like Isaiah Stewart. And coming in at center, it's fan duel. You only get one. So, I'm going to pay up right here. Joel B. He's already said he's planning on playing tomorrow. So, if nothing changes, they don't sit him or rest him or say he has limited minutes. I have no problem going to Joel B. As he should just destroy Brooke Lopez on the inside, man. Embiid has been playing lights out. He has it all working, and I like getting to him tomorrow. So there you have it, man. My starting five on fan duel. Terry Rozier, Josh Jackson, Najee Marshall, Isaiah Stewart, and Joel Embiid. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pool. You know I'm going to have plenty of it. That's going to do it for us here today. Y'all know the motto. Chances make champions. Y'all green up. i see y'all tomorrow, all right? Let's go.